balancing equations. An example with helps. This is an example of one way to get a balanced equation for a chemical reaction. It focuses on counting the number of atoms of each element that are present on each side of the reaction and has you write down those numbers as you determine what they are. However, I want to emphasize that it is not required that you do this. In fact, this is just to help as you are starting to learn how to balance equations. It will help you focus on the things you need to look at in order to balance the equation. Ideally, you will be able to discard this approach once you have learned to focus on the things you need to look at. Let's begin with the skeleton equation. IrCl3 plus NaOH gives Ir2O3 plus HCl plus NaCl. I have placed a line in front of each compound as a place to put the coefficient for that compound. As part of this method, it is very useful to not assume that the lack of a coefficient means that the coefficient is 1, but rather to place a 1 specifically in the space to show that you have chosen or determined a coefficient for that compound. Once you get comfortable with balancing equations, it will no longer be necessary to do this and the practice can be stopped. Begin by choosing the coefficient for one of the formulas. We get to choose the coefficient of one, but only one of the substances in the reaction. After that, we must figure out what the other coefficients would be. So the question is, which of the five substances in this reaction should we choose? Usually, the best choice is the formula with the most atoms. This is not always true, and if it doesn't work out, we can start over and choose a different substance to start with. In this case, that formula is IR2O3. So now the question becomes, what number should I choose for the coefficient? The coefficient chosen can be any number, but often one or two is a convenient choice. If the number gets too large, that may make it more difficult to figure out the other coefficients. So let's pick a 1 for the coefficient of IR2O3. Knowing this coefficient allows us to determine the number of atoms of iridium and of oxygen on the right side of the equation, because each element only appears once in the products. I have placed a separator line under the arrow to separate the reactants from the products because we need to show that the number of atoms of each element is the same on the two sides. To find the number of atoms of an element, we multiply the coefficient by the subscript. In this case, the coefficient is 1 and the subscript is 2, so there are two iridium atoms. In the same way, there are three oxygen atoms in the products. Knowing these numbers allows us to determine the number of atoms of iridium and of oxygen on the left side of the equation. Since there are two iridium atoms and three oxygen atoms on the right, there must be the same numbers of them on the left as well. Since we know the number of iridium atoms on the left, we can determine the coefficient of iridium chloride. Iridium appears only once in the reactants, in IrCl3. So to get two iridium in the reactants, the coefficient of the IrCl3 needs to be a 2. Similarly, oxygen appears only once in the reactants, in NaOH. Since we need to have three oxygen atoms in the reactants and NaOH has only one, we need to have a three for the coefficient of NaOH. Now, since we know the coefficient of IrCl3, we can find the number of chlorine atoms in the reactants because chlorine appears only once in the reactants. 
Again, this is a product of the coefficient and the subscript. So, the coefficient is 2, the subscript is 3, so 2 times 3 equals 6 chlorine atoms. We also know the coefficient of the NaOH, so we can find the number of sodium atoms, 3, and the number of hydrogen atoms, also 3. Now we know the number of sodium atoms in the products, 3, the number of hydrogen atoms in the products, also 3, and the number of chlorine atoms in the products, 6. We need to figure out the coefficients for the HCl and for the NaCl. Chlorine appears in both of them, which would make it difficult to figure out what the number to use is in either one. Because the chlorine appears in both, we do not try to use it to find the coefficients unless we have to. And here we do not. So we will ignore the chlorine for now. There are three sodium atoms in the products. So there needs to be a three as the coefficient for the sodium chloride. Similarly, there are three hydrogen atoms in the products. So there needs to be a 3 as a coefficient for the HCl. Now we should check to make sure that each element is balanced in the reaction by finding the total number of atoms of each element on each side of the reaction. For iridium, there are two atoms in the reactants and two in the products. For chlorine, there are six atoms in the reactants, and three plus three is six atoms in the products. For sodium, there are three atoms in the reactants, and three in the products. For oxygen, there are three atoms in the reactants, and three in the products. For hydrogen, there are three atoms in the reactants, and three in the products. Once all the elements are checked, we now have a balanced equation. So, here are some hints to help you balance reactions. Number one, choose the largest formula, the one with the most atoms. Two, choose the coefficient for this formula. Usually a one or a two is best. Three, Focus on one element at a time to balance and ignore the others. Four, put off balancing elements that appear in more than one formula on any side as long as possible. O and H are commonly balanced last. And five, always check to make sure each element is balanced at the end. You may pause the video here to write down these if you wish.